In this video, I will attempt to explain how you can install a flush mounted ceiling beam for a room addition. So let's go ahead and start stripping this baby down, get rid of the sheathing. Take a look at here. Here we have an exterior wall, our concrete slab for the addition, roof rafters, blocks. The sizes of the rafters might make a difference. The reason why I'm making this video, someone asked for it a long time ago, but someone just recently they're having some uh, problems with the beam sticking out of the roof. And this is a common problem amongst uh, room additions. I ran into it once myself, but let's go ahead and start with installing the beam um, for the flush mounted ceiling beam. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this part right here is just so that you can take a look at the framing give you an idea of what it looks like before we tear it apart. I always got to tear it apart and put it back together. So that's what it would look like, give you an idea. Now let's take a look at some walls. Again, I'm just doing this to put some perspective in. We have a 14 foot by 14 foot room addition with the walls there, six foot opening for a door. And you can see how it's framed. Give you an idea how the room addition would tie into the corner of the existing house. Now I haven't removed the exterior wall yet. Remember the wall here. This is what the exterior wall had a sliding glass door in it. And if this is the case and you just want to um, leave this opening here, you shouldn't have a problem. You shouldn't need to do any major modifications to the um, structure because the engineering has already been done for you, as long as you don't change anything. Here's a strap. A lot of times a strap is going to be required to, for the new top plates to attach to the existing plates, one on each side. And then, of course, we cut the rafter tails there. They used to stick down past this, and now they've been cut off. And there's that. Let's go ahead and install the beam here. You can see we have removed the wall, no longer there. Now the room addition, the new slab would start here. Um, and we'll see at the end of the video, but a lot of times you're going to want to, if you can, move the beam over into this area so that you can install any straps or um, hardware that might need to go in. You might actually need a hold down here. If it's over farther, it might be difficult to install some of that stuff. So if you can move it into the room addition area, um, it might be better less digging underneath the existing foundation also. Hope that makes sense. The beam can be moved if it needs to. It can go in, in either direction, just to give you an idea. Um, and again, you can see how the beam is sticking up past the roof here. This isn't going to work out good for our new building. And, and again, your beam is going to depend upon the addition. If you have a five foot opening, you might need a six by six. If you have a 20 foot opening, you might need something that's eight inches wide and uh, 16 inches tall. Who knows? Um, this is where you could get into a problem. You would simply attach hangers to the beam so that they could so that you could attach the rafters and the ceiling joists to them. You will need to install a double hanger if the ceiling joists are next to the rafter. It's not uncommon to actually find a rafter where you might have two foot on center rafters and 16 inch on center ceiling joist. And if that's the case, then the ceiling joists will need single hangers along with the rafters and then double hangers where the ceiling joist attaches to the rafter. There's the flush mounted beam. That's what I was talking about. You would come off the existing ceiling and then you would want something flat so that this room in here would be flat also. The ceiling. The other side there. The beam, no, don't forget that the beam is actually transferring the weight down. So all of the weight from the roof rafters, any weight that's going to be stacked on top of here is actually transferring down to the post and down to a concrete footing. Now here's the problem most people miss. You might actually need a larger pad, some type of concrete pad to support this weight. 
the footings, the regular house footings might not be enough. So I'm just kind of throwing that out there. And this is what I was talking about earlier. If you have to dig underneath the existing structure with a footing and the post is here, you're not going to have to dig as far. If this post goes back five or six inches, you're going to need to dig another six or you know, five or six inches into this area. So uh, moving the post, and I'm suggesting this because of the design, if you're designing something, um, wouldn't be a bad idea to design something like this for that reason. So anyway, that's it for the video, a flush mounted addition beam. I am going to make a follow up video with this. Um, to talk about the problems with the beams sticking out of the roof and what you can actually do um, about that, give you a few ideas.